In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at Replit Agent. This is a first look for me. I haven't used this before, so I'm going to plug in all of my financial information, and then I'm going to hop back and we're going to go through some demos and see what we can do with it. I'm going to go ahead and purchase here. There is a little bit of onboarding here. You can see deploy in minutes, launch your apps. We can launch our apps with just a few clicks. We have $10 of flexible credits each month and 100 static websites. We get four B CPUs, eight gigs of memory, as well as 50 gigs of account storage, and then a hundred gigabytes of outbound data transfer. I'm going to accept this and let's just go ahead and try one of these examples here. I'm going to use the stock analysis example that they have. So it says, I want to input a stock symbol and get a summary of financial data. Give me a table and a chart tracking the stock price and other key financial information. Use data from Yahoo Finance. Let me download the table data as a CSV. I'm going to click start building. We see Replit agent is in early access. The agent is an experimental product. I will do my best to fulfill your request, but expect occasional errors or unexpected behavior. We are working to improve the experience and appreciate your feedback as you put the agent to the test. I'm going to go ahead and click don't show again. And then here we're going to start. When we put that in, we have our chat interface. It says, absolutely. Let me propose what we'll build for you. I've created a plan for a streamlit based web application to visualize and analyze stock data from Yahoo Finance. The app will allow users to input a stock symbol, view key financial data in a table and chart and download the data as a CSV. Would you like to review the details of this plan? I'm going to say instead, I want this built as Next.js. While we wait for that, we see that it also did ask if we wanted to add any additional features. You can always make changes later, but some of the initial ones were add multiple stock comparison, implement technical analysis indicators, include new sentiment analysis for the related stock. So I asked it to build a Next.js application and it says, unfortunately, that's not supported in the environment. Instead, it's created a plan for a Flask based web application with a vanilla JavaScript front end to visualize and analyze the stock data from Yahoo Finance. This approach will provide similar functionality to what you're looking for. The app will allow users to input a stock symbol, view financial data in a table chart and download the data as a CSV. Would you like to review the details of this alternative plan? I'm going to say I'd like the app built with a Node.js backend and a React front end. I apologize, I cannot use Node.js for the backend or React for the front end. They are not supported in our current environment. I've created a plan for a Flask based web application with vanilla JavaScript front end to visualize and analyze stock data. This approach will provide similar functionality to what you're looking for while working with our constraints. The app will allow users to input a stock symbol, view key financial information in a table and a chart and download the data as a CSV. Would you like to proceed with this alternative plan or do you have any other requirements that we need to accommodate? So we'll go ahead and approve that. So my wallet is a little bit of a surprise that I couldn't get a JavaScript environment and it really wanted to steer me towards this Python environment backend. Let's see what it will generate on the front end. So it went through and it started to configure the environment for us. Now we see that it's installing the dependencies that we're going to be using within our environment. After a couple minutes, we now see our application. So I can say, AAPL, we'll click fetch data here. And then we see this method is not implemented. It checked that a complete date adapter is provided. So what I'm gonna do here, and what I encourage you with any of these new AI products is anytime that there's an error, put that error within chat. Don't go and reach out to Replit. Just know that the next step when you have an error is you ask the AI. Sometimes I get a lot of comments in my video on how to do particular things. And I really encourage more people just ask an AI, use any AI with the particular question that you have. If it has the context of what you're doing and you feed it the error, it will likely be able to eventually resolve it. It might take a couple tries, but just know that's probably the best approach when you run into any issues. So it made some tweaks to our application. It restarted the server. Now I'm going to try this again with PL, which is the Apple ticker here. We'll click fetch and we also don't see anything again here. So now we see that it cannot use import statement outside of a module. So we're going to paste that in here. 
And let's take a look at our project here. So let's look at our static files here and let's see what it's doing within the app.js. So the thing with this is while it's great to have vanilla JavaScript, I think a lot of people will likely want something like React, especially for their front end components. Now we don't see an error there. I'm going to click AAPL again and there we go. So after a couple tries, it got it right for us. And so while there was a little bit of friction there, you saw how you might have to potentially debug something like this. Just keep asking the chat, poke around and try and find the errors. Now, mind you, you probably would have to have a little bit of knowledge to know where to look, whether it's within the console or within the terminal to see where the errors are. But look at this, with just natural language, we have an app. And if I go ahead and click deploy, the cool thing with this is everything's built into Replit. I can click deploy on a reserve VM, auto scale, static, scheduled. In this case, let's click reserve VM. We'll go to the cheapest option here and I'm going to click deploy. The really cool thing with this is going to provision all the resources that we need. We see that it's deploying, it's provisioning everything that it needs. It's going to go through the build phase, the bundle phase, and then finally it's going to promote it and then it's going to be live. Once it's live, you'll be able to share it. You'll be able to put a domain in front of it. Say if you actually have a domain for a website idea that you might have or a side project idea, you can just easily plug that in as well. This is very similar to something like Cursor, but the cool thing with this are a few fold, and this is a different implementation than some of the other offerings out there right now. Replit is really end-to-end -end where you can start and build out projects. So you can work in here just like you would something like VS Code or Cursor or what have you. And then you can even go all the way within their platform and deploy it. So if you take Vercel, for example, they have the V0 offering that does really great Next.js components, and they're really great on the React side of things and the JavaScript side of things. But in terms of local development or that IDE experience that Replit has, they don't have something quite like that. They don't have any sort of features where you can code on the fly in these little REPLs like Replit does. We do see that it's bundled and it's going through the promotion phase. Now, in terms of the process and it actually running through, provisioning all the resources, building everything, installing the dependencies in the local environment, the first time that you set things up, I did notice that it is going to take a little bit of time, right? So sometimes some of these dependencies can be pretty big depending on what you're doing. And then the actual deployment process, you can see it says we started two minutes ago. All right, so we see that it's successfully deployed to our stock summary tracker dash developers digest. And we'll open it up. We'll try it out. We'll click fetch data. And there we have it. So while there was a little bit of friction, the fact that you can do all of this with natural language is really amazing. So it built out all of the directories. It installed all of the dependencies. It provisioned all of the different resources. Really amazing when you think about it. Just think a couple of years ago before ChatGPT, the thought of something like this would have been out of this world. You would have thought that this is something that's 10 years out. I have no doubt that the team at Replit will ultimately be able to support React applications, Node.js applications, to ultimately offer this to a wider and wider range of developers that are interested in this sort of thing. Mind you, this is the first time that I have paid for Replit. Uh, I usually use other services, AWS or Vercel or Railway, depending on the project or whether it's at work or whether it's for the channel here or side projects. This is obviously really impressive. Now, the one thing with this that I will try in another video is I want to try and see if it already has a place to start, like an existing application, to see how well this agent works with existing code to try that out in a future video. This, I just wanted to do a quick demo of the new Replit agent offering. Kudos to the team at Replit. This is really impressive stuff. I look forward to seeing how this builds out over time. Otherwise, I'm going to play around with this a little bit more. I'll make another video over the coming month, taking a look to see at what I've figured out. So that's it for this one. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.